and wheels tonight, Peter Gill patrols the motorway, Graham Booth, small town races, and Tony Palmer tries a triumphal return. Here's a car few people will have heard of. It's the Brush, a British make that lasted only three years. Hundreds of manufacturers have disappeared over the years. Bugatti, Clino, Hudson, Studebaker, to name but a few. But once in a while, an old name is revived. Triumph Motorcycles are now back on the market after a long absence, and Tony Palmer has been trying one out. Looks like just another Oriental superbike being held back at idling speed to stay within the legal limit. But take a closer look. It'll tell you this is not Japanese at all. It's actually British old chap. In my misspent youth, this brand on the side of a bike used to mean plenty of oil leaks, the rhythmic throb of an inline twin, soggy handling, and the sparse open frame of a post-war British design. But with a born-again Triumph of the 90s, you won't get any oil drips, the handling's superb, you can hardly feel the engine running, and it looks more like a GPZ Kawasaki or a Honda than anything remotely British or European. This is a totally brand new project. They've got a, a huge investment. I understand it's something to the tune of 60 million pounds in a standalone production unit near Birmingham. And it is an absolutely, totally new project. It has absolutely nothing to do with the traditional Triumph name. And if that's the case, why do you think they've continued with the Triumph name? They've continued with the name because it's a world-recognised brand. The interest in the Triumph brand has always been fantastic in New Zealand. As a matter of fact, they, they del deliberately chose New Zealand for their international launch. We were the first to get them and it's because of the, the high recognition of the name that they've continued with it. On first impressions, this is a big motorcycle, much bigger physically than any previous models. Not surprising when you consider it's 1200cc